Hello friends and uh, followers, welcome back to another video in Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this video we will be looking at how to fly a VOR DME approach with PMDG 737-800. This should apply to the all 737 variants and you should be able to fly a VOR DME approach uh, with any of those if you follow the steps I'm going to explain. I decided to record this video because ILS approaches, RNAV approaches are most common and you can find a lot of tutorials on how to fly those. However, there are not too many options when it comes to EOR DME approaches and I wanted to record this tutorial to show you how you can fly this. It's kind of loud out here, so let's jump into the cockpit and we will start discussing what we are going to do. We are in the cockpit of 737 and currently holding close to Berlin, Brandenburg Airport. We departed from Frankfurt and came all the way to here in Lufthansa colors. Our flight number is Deutsche Lufthansa 188. And I am intentionally holding here to explain what we are going to do to configure the aircraft for a VOR DME approach. VOR DME approaches are known as non-precision approaches. In other words, it's lacking the vertical guidance. The pilot flying is responsible for descending as the approach will not guide you like an ILS uh, into the runway. So we'll configure the aircraft first and then we will pull up the chart and take a look at the chart and discuss what information is on the chart and how we are going to use that information. First things first, we are currently holding, we need to configure our aircraft for approach. Um, Right now we don't have to worry about the speed and anything else, but we need to tune the VOR first and the VOR frequency for runway 25 left, VOR DME approaching to Berlin Brandenburg is 114.1, so we'll start with tuning that, 114.1 is tuned, 114.1 is tuned on both sides. Next step, we are going to set the final approach course, that's 245. And we should be reading the DME. We are at 30 miles to the VOR. Next thing is to set up our minimums. For our approach, it's 730. And it's a barometric minimum, so we will set that here. gonna take a while or need to set 730 a little bit over that is now set and initial configuration of the aircraft is pretty much done our landing lights are on we are holding at 9800 feet we'll switch our engine starter switches to continuous ignition uh, we have plenty of room to deploy the flaps. This green line we see here is the final approach course to the VOR. And let's pull up the chart and talk about what information is on the chart. Okay. It's going to load here in a second. That's our flight plan path. And this is our approach into Brandenburg. Couple things to note here. At Zenim, we need to be at 3000 feet, that's our final approach fix, right here, and then we need to start descending. VOR frequency final approach course is on the chart, along with the minimums, and the airport elevation and runway elevation. We also have missed approach instructions, our missed approach altitude is 4000 feet, we will set this up when we are uh, below a certain altitude. and on. VOR DME approach plates, you get this DME and altitude table. <coughs> Excuse me, this is a 
given to the pilot as an extra situational awareness measure. So we are expecting to be at 2800, 2850 at 11 DME to the VOR, at 10 DME 2530, 9 DME 2210, so on. So how we can use this information? We have a fix page on our FMC. We can go to the fix. We need to select BBI as our fix. That's the VOR. And we can set a 11 mile ring. That's where we expect to be at 2850. We can set a seven mile ring. I'm just creating a couple random checkpoints to cross check the altitude with the chart to see if we are below or above to get a little bit more vertical guidance and finally we can set the 5 DME and at 5 DME we are expecting to be at 940 feet so it's telling us to reset the altitude to start descending we will do that when we exit the hold the other information over here is the ground speed 120, 140, 160, 180, and then the descent angle and this, the vertical speed you need to fly to maintain that descent angle. So at 140 knots ground speed, we need to descend roughly around 750 feet per minute to maintain a 3 degree glide into the runway. The TCH you see here is threshold crossing height which means we need to be crossing the runway threshold at 50 feet if we properly follow the 3 degree glide or descent path into the runway and that is pretty much the information that we can find on the chart so how we are going to execute this first we need to get down to 3000 before Zenim at our approach we will be landing with flaps 40, our approach speed is 133. So that's now set and should be displayed on our PFD. We will exit the hold at 9800, start descending down to 3000 first. And because we don't have vertical guidance, luckily we have VNAV that can help us to descend at that profile. You can hand fly this, uh, it will be probably a little bit harder to maintain the 3 degree descent path and we are not going to use the approach mode on the MCP. You can use VOR localizer mode but as far as my research goes, I'm not sure if this is true to life, VNAV is your best shot at flying a VOR DME approach because it will help you to descend uh, on that profile. If we check the legs page, Zenim 3000, we never get us down to 3000 at Zenim, and then 1400 at 6.5 DME to the VOR. So that 65 VOR is 6.5 DME to the VOR, which is also on the chart. If I pull the chart again, hopefully we will be able to see it. right here 65 POR that's 6.5 and we need to be between 1200 and 1500 which it's calculating 1400 for us and then MD25L is the last point and at this waypoint this is um, 3 DME to the runway we need to be well below our minimums all right, we will use VNAV to descend. We will first descend to 3000, but before we get to Zenim, we will set the altitude down to our minimums, 730 or below, and VNAV should go guide us. So at our minimums, we should be able to see the runway and continue descending by disconnecting the autopilot and flying the rest of the approach manually to land the aircraft. Therefore, Let's go and arm the exit from the hold. Oh, by the way, before we do that, let's set our altitude, MCP altitude, to 3000 first. 
that is now set our final approach courses are set we'll set the heading to our final approach course momentarily it says drag required that's fine go to hold and exit hold execute and we'll see exit armed and now the aircraft will exit the hold after another turn I believe and then we should be able to fly the rest of the approach when we exit the hold we will execute a descent by pressing the altitude intervent button and then the aircraft should start descending down to 3000 and we'll talk about the rest when we get there right now we exit the hold let's click the altitude intervent and the aircraft should start descending we will open the speed window and set the speed to minimum flap speed we have plenty of room to deploy the flaps so we are not too worried about that and not in a rush we'll bring the range to 10 miles we are going to overshoot that turn a little bit because we exited the hold a little bit improperly I guess maybe I should have waited until we made another turn but so be it we'll fix this we will get back on the path and the aircraft will get down we are flying at minimum clean flap speed which means we don't have to deploy any flaps just yet and we are reading the VOR DME information. We are not going to switch to approach mode. As I said, we will use LNAV and VNAV all the way to the minimums and then manually apply the rest of the approach. Aircraft should turn right now towards the runway. And we should set our heading to final approach course, which is 245. in case we need to fly heading select for any reason that's readily available for us and there we go we are almost in line with the runway we'll switch to the local barometric pressure now I saw the warning transition flight level is given by the ATC but I'm not using ATC today therefore I switched and we will monitor the vertical profile probably will require some drag to stay on the profile but right now we are below it so it should shallow the descent rate and get back on profile on its own we are going to let VNAV do its magic and fly like this maybe go to 20 mile range and we should be seeing the rings that we placed remember first one was 11 7 and 5 and the altitudes we need to be at at 11 28 50 at 7 15 70 and 5 940 so we will try to remember those altitudes uh, looks like we are just fine flying down to 3000 feet and getting close to the runway we still have 30 miles to the VOR and that is after the runway so we are a little bit closer to the runway but we are not quite there to deploy the flaps that is our 3000 uh, Zanim waypoint that's our final fix before that we need to configure the aircraft and get down to the speeds that we need to be at. I will slowly start dropping the speed because we are within 15 miles of that waypoint. So we will go down to 200, 190 knots and then select flaps level 1 or flaps 1. That should create some drag to slow us down we can always use the speed brake uh, right now we need to arm the speed brakes for landing we will select auto brakes 3 and signs are on continuous ignition we are pretty much configured except the descending part so we are coming down to 190 let's keep dropping the speed to 170 
and keep deploying the flaps according to this plug card you see here if I can get to it these are the flap speeds so I can deploy all the way to flaps 5 below 250 knots and we can go to flaps 10 because we are well below two, 210 knots so we'll keep deploying flaps and slowing the aircraft down there is the airport in front of us we are coming down to 5000 and we shouldn't let the aircraft level off so this is called a continuous descent on final approach CDFA so we shouldn't let the aircraft uh, level off before we reach 3000 we should set uh, the altitude to our minimums which is 730 or in our case it's going to be 700 and we will keep monitoring all right very nice we are the speed is coming down we are at flaps 5 getting close to our final fix I'll wait a little bit more to bleed off some more speed and then I will select flaps 10 and when we are at final fix which is Zenim you see here we will select flaps 15 and drop the landing gear coming down to 4500 everything is looking good so far and we are just waiting to get to 3000 or before 3000 we will change it as the altitude this top of this white bar when we pass this we can drop the altitude more let's do that we are almost there so we will select 700 and stay on the vertical profile we are still a little bit low as far as I can tell and if you are feeling like I need to stay a little bit higher you can also control your vertical speed but we now should maintain and respect that 3000 so we should stay around 3000 before passing below uh, 3000 or before passing this waypoint here if we don't we can control it by vertical speed but we are going to get a little bit low no we don't we are pitching up maintaining 3000 which is what we want and then the aircraft should start descending below 3000 when we get to this waypoint we can drop the range closer now set the speed to 160 so far so good it didn't go as I expected I was hoping to descend a little bit slower and get to 3000 while we are reaching Zenim and pass below 3000 without leveling off but so be it it takes a lot of practice to control your vertical speed and sometimes you need to trust your instincts and use vertical speed mode instead of VNAV which is completely fine for VORDME approaches but I think we will be okay We'll select flaps 10 now. Coming to our final fix, we should start descending, passing Zenim, and we will do these checks. At this green ring, we need to be at 2850, remember. Next one, we need to be at 1570. So we will do those those checks uh, to see where we are uh, in relative to the the vertical profile so that's the vertical profile indicator it's coming down which means we are getting back on profile we were low a little bit 
which means we descended a little bit faster but we are okay we started descending again so that means gear is coming down collapse 50 we will now slow down to our approach speed of 133 and keep deploying flaps flaps 25 radio altitude started to kick in flaps 30 We have visual of the runway. We can take control at this point, but while we have VNAV, I can go a little bit longer. Flaps 40. Last stage of flaps deployed. We are coming down to the speed, past the green line. I forgot to check that, but we'll do the next check. I think we are good. So when we hit here, we need to be at 1570 so let's check that and make sure we are so we are at at 8 miles to the VOR we need to be at 1890 according to the chart so it is looking okay we look it looks like we are on profile and we can also see it here too so we are at 8 miles 1890 eight, yep we are on profile that's definitely and it looks like we are offset a little bit we can cycle the flight directors to reset the guidance we are coming down to our minimums getting ready to take control we hit that green line 1570 we are on profile perfectly fine we are offset to the left a little bit so I think I'm gonna take control when we get close. Oh, we are we are moving. Um, that's because we are aligned with the VOR, but not maybe with the runway or the VOR is offset. That has an offset. So that what it looks like. We are coming to the white bar. So when we reach to top of this white bar, we can set the missed approach altitude. We are there now. So let's set missed approach altitude. That's set. Aircraft should keep descending. I'll disconnect the autopilot and align with the runway and keep descending while maintaining the profile. Puppy lights are showing three reds, one whites. We will follow the puppies and try to stay on profile. Approaching minimum. Okay, looking good. Minimums. Continue. Alright, two white, two red. 500. We are off to the right a little bit, so we will maintain this course. We are a little bit lower. Pull the nose up just a tiny, tiny bit. Alright, two whites again. Maintaining. Checked. Very nice. Following the puppies. Disconnecting all the throttle now. We should pass the threshold at 50 feet. Hold the nose up. 50. 30. Cut the throttles. 10. And we are down. Bring the nose down, reversers engaged. Maintain the center line. Uh, coming down to 60 knots. All the brakes off. And we will manually brake and use this next high speed exit to vacate the runway. Can also turn runway turn off lights, taxi lights, braking, braking, and then exiting the runway. We can bring the flaps in, speed brakes in. Now we have vacated the runway. Sorry about that wheel. We can turn off the runway turn off lights and landing lights. 
as well as the strobes and we'll go and find ourselves a parking spot so let me stop here momentarily I need to pull up the airport chart to see the gates all right we will continue straight ahead take a right turn and then go to the terminal let's keep moving So this is how you fly a VOR DME approach and have vertical guidance using uh, VNAV and LNAV. You don't have to even use the approach mode, but you can perfectly land using a VOR DME approach uh, if you don't have an ILS in the airfield that you are flying into or you want to try out and learn something new and practice that this could be something uh, actually fun to try uh, different ways of doing this the biggest part here is to control the vertical profile other than that oops I missed my turn other than that everything should be fine uh, it is just to keep the profile and continuously descent without leveling off is the tricky part that you need to practice and get used to and learn how the aircraft behaves but other than that uh, it's a really fun approach to fly the next video I think I will record about the VOR DME arc type of approach on how to fly it using PMDG 737 series aircraft and if you have questions or if you want to see the same type of approach with different aircraft please let me know in the comments which aircraft you want to see or you are interested in learning how to fly a VOR DME approach and I will be happy to record another video we will continue like this there is an aircraft right in front of us by the way the traffic is injected by FSLTL if you are interested in learning how to install and configure it uh, my last videos was two videos before this is about FSLTL and how to install and configure it but I'm not sure if this aircraft knows what it is doing we will continue on this taxiway we are a little bit faster than I like I need to cut the throttles a little bit and slow us down and keep the speed around 20 on the taxiways I think we have to cross through this aircraft I'm not sure what this is doing uh, let's not see it or pretend like it's not there it looks like a Ryanair yep anyway and we'll take this left turn into the gates and then find ourselves a parking spot you can also use GSX to get a parking spot uh, we can try that too we slow down we can call a follow me car if I stop here and ask GSX to help us park the aircraft so we are going to gate B let's see small 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 I think we will use this one and request follow me We'll use Lufthansa and go outside and see where that uh, follow me car is. It should be coming towards us now. We should get a notification from GSX how long it is going to take for the follow me car to reach to us. 1 minute 30 seconds, oh my god. Alright, so be it. I hope there is not an aircraft parked for the gate that we are going to uh, park we'll see how GSX uh, reads the traffic injected by FSLTL by trying this so this is probably additional content has nothing to do with the VOR DME approach but whatever so there's a Turkish Airlines taxiing right here and that's our follow me car coming towards us 
hopefully we will start moving before the Turkish Airlines comes over here. Let's go into the cockpit and wait for our follow me car. What we can do is we can fire up the APU while we are here as we will be parking, parking shortly and bring the lower screen turn the lower screen on there is our follow follow me car so he should turn around and guide us to the gate there we go still not too smooth in terms of animations that's the master caution because I don't have flaps deployed and increase the throttles too much I think it will be fine like this all right let's follow him can maybe turn on my head tracking to see where this guy is going I hope this doesn't make any of you motion sick luckily that aircraft is waiting for us so hopefully we will be able to cross without hitting the Turkish Airlines waiting here um, I shouldn't be passing this close by the way but these things hopefully will improve over time and the live traffic or injected traffic becomes a little bit more realistic and follows uh, your movement and stops or waits for you to pass appropriately so but other than that I think we'll be fine uh, follow me car is over there APU is now online we can wait until we reach the gate oh looks like that is our gate so let's cut the throttles slower down hello oh he is doing some interesting moves hello him he is waiting for us to get closer I guess and hopefully he is gonna start moving again there he goes just a little bit more and then we will be on a, we will be at our gate looks like we reached our gate yep let's follow him into the gate slow the aircraft down burn and hopefully i will do a good job do we have a marshaller yes we do it's hard to see him but i do see the marshaller okay i'm not sure if this is the correct I messed it up I guess okay maybe he is asking us to stop I'm not sure if this is the correct parking for this gate I don't know the jetways are looking messed up too so let's see and there are no ground markings here so I don't think I did a great job parking the aircraft and it's always hit or miss with GSX we'll stop here set the parking brake and then put the APU generators on bus so two blue one red engines are dead shutting down the engines I'm not gonna hold you guys here for uh, Deboarding the aircraft, taxi lights can come off now. And when we pass below 20% N2, we can turn off the anti collision lights. There it is. They are now turned off. APU bleed is on, engine bleeds are off, electric hydraulic pumps off. Over here, probe heat off, window heat is coming off. Isolation valve open oops that's not that hex on 
recirculation fans are open and there you have it guys we are parked i'm not gonna worry about the rest but welcome to berlin brandenburg and i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope this was informational for you on how to fly a vor dme approach if you like the video please consider giving the video a like and if you stumbled upon this video and not a channel subscriber consider subscribing and hitting that uh, notifications bell to get notified for my future videos every bit helps so please do take a couple seconds to hit that subscribe button and enjoy your flying and i'll be seeing you in the next video